I'm Jessica Freed. I'm the chair elect of um, the organization of student representatives, and we'll just go through a little orientation for you. So to start off, I want to talk a little bit just about the AAMC in general, or the Association of American Medical Colleges. So the AAMC was first founded in 1876 by 22 medical school deans. Within academic medicine today, the AAMC represents approximately 128,000 faculty, 75,000 medical students, and 110,000 residents. So the AAMC carries out its mission by educating the physician and medical scientist workforce, discovering new medical knowledge, developing innovative technologies for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of disease, and providing healthcare services in academic settings. So through its many programs and services, the AAMC strengthens the world's most advanced medical care by supporting the entire spectrum of education, research, and patient care activities conducted by our member institutions. The AAMC and our members are dedicated to the communities we serve and steadfast in our desire to earn and keep the public's trust for the role we play in improving the nation's health. So this slide is the AAMC strategy map. It's a little bit overwhelming to my brain, um, but what I'd like you to focus on is how the mission areas, in, areas of impact, impact strategy, and operational strategies relate to each other. So the AAMC serves and leads the academic medicine community to improve the health of all. And the areas that we hope to impact um, in doing so are medical education, care delivery, research, diversity, and inclusion. In terms of what we do, students are, in particular are um, focused in learning and leadership, integrated service programs, and policy and advocacy. And member capacity building is also a strategy that the AAMC uses. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of these areas as we go through the presentation. So really, the AAMC functions as three organizations in one. We're a think tank, a member organization, and also a service organization. In terms of AAMC services, this is something that you may have encountered and known the AAMC for before you became an OSR. So services like AMCAS, Careers in Medicine, ERAS, FIRST, MCAT, and VSAS are near and dear to students' hearts. The AAMC also publishes um, certain newsletters and websites that help keep students and other professionals in medical education informed about current events that are important to medical education, including the AAMC Reporter, Washington Highlights, and AAMC Stat. This is a general overview of the structure of the AAMC, and this is a slide that I didn't actually see until I was chair elect, and I find it really helpful to kind of put it all into perspective. So the AAMC is governed by a 17-member board of directors which includes one medical student. And beginning in November, that will be Maria Kalashnikova, who is our current Western Regional Chair. So that Board of Directors is represented by the green circle in this diagram. And then there's councils and organizations within, um, uh, that are mission, that are, excuse me, within that structure. And so the OSR, as you'll see, is, is circled as one of the little octagons there, is one of those councils and organizations. And so we exist in conjunction with the ORR, which is the Organization of Resident Representatives, the Council of Teaching Hospitals, or COTH, the Council of Deans, which is COD, and CAS, which is the Council of Academic Societies. If this is all sounding like alphabet soup to you right now, don't worry. It sounded that way to me in the beginning as well. Um, there's a nice handbook that I'll talk about a little bit later that has all of the acronyms spelled out for you in the back, so don't worry. It'll take you years to learn all of them. There's also several groups that, uh, professional development groups that belong to the AAMC, including, um, just to, for a few highlights, GWIMS, which is the Group on Women in Medicine um, and Science, GSA, which is the Group on Student Affairs, and so on and so forth. So this just gives you a big overview of how the AAMC is structured. This is the AAMC leadership team, and uh, if you're able to attend the annual meeting in November, um, you'll get to hear Dr. Kirch and Dr. Grover give updates on um, the AAMC um, over the next year in terms of goals and where we're headed. And Dr. Grover um, is always, you know, out on the hill doing what he can <laughs> when hopefully when government reopens to um, advance um, the concerns of academic medicine. So how the AAMC operates, I think we've 
pretty much been over this in terms of um, the structure, but I really wanted to emphasize with this slide that um, it's all of the decisions are um, driven by consensus and driven by staff, and we operate with one voice. And so that's an important thing to remember when you're an OSR is that you do represent the organization, um, and it's important to think about your role within the organization. So now that we've talked about the AAMC, let's turn um, our attention to the OSR. So the OSR um, was founded in 1971. Um, this, fo this was following um, a resolution that was passed in 1968, which called for the development of mechanisms for students to participate in the affairs of the AAMC. So when the OSR was created in 1971, the goals were to facilitate the expression of students' ideas and views, to incorporate students into the government of the AAMC, and to foster the exchange of ideas among students and other concerned groups, and to facilitate students' actions on healthcare issues. So getting a little bit further into the purpose of the OSR, you know, one really important factor um, or goal is to advance the development of leadership skills among medical students. And so in your role as an OSR, um, you will have an enormous amount of leadership um, skill development over your time serving, and especially if you uh, choose to run for a regional or national position, which I'll talk a little bit later. Um, another purpose of the OSR is to regularly communicate the activities and discussions within the academic medicine community to all medical students. So a big part of your role um, is to take what you learn at the national level and, and what the AAMC, um, what direction the AAMC is heading in, and communicate that at your home institution. Um, it's also important to accurately assess and represent the views and interests of all medical students to the AAMC. So as a rep for your institution, you offer a unique view um, of, of the opinions coming from students at your institution. And so I know some of you may be at pretty large campuses or at campuses with regional um, campuses, and it's really important for you to get an idea of, of what the concerns, concerns and issues are for students at your institution broadly. And finally, uh, the OSR was formed to provide a forum through which medical students can communicate about medical education, research, and patient care, recognizing that we are the next generation of leaders in academic medicine. So in terms of missions of the OSR, the OSR fulfills a unique role among medical student organizations. It provides medical students with representation in the AAMC, which, as commented on in our first slide, is the nation's largest association dedicated solely to the advancement of academic medicine. Um, the OSR ensures that medical students actively participate in directing their education, preserving their rights, and delineating their professional responsibilities. And that's something that I really can't emphasize enough and that I wasn't um, necessarily fully understanding of until I started serving on the advisory board, which again, I'll, I'll speak a little bit more on that later. Um, but it really is a unique opportunity for students to have their voice heard, um, you know, at a very real national level uh, when it comes to directing the future of academic medicine. Um, so in terms of our strategic goals, there's a lot of text on these, these slides, and I kind of just want to touch on each of these briefly, and you'll all have access to the slide deck after the presentation and can read these a little bit more fully. Um, but it's important for the OSR to provide um, input on issues addressed by the AAMC, uh, both at state and federal government levels, um, but also think, uh, thinking about addressing these points at your home institution. Uh, one of our strategic goals is to facilitate communication between student bodies of different medical schools, so you'll find an enormous amount of value in going to these meetings um, and also just using the email listserv to communicate with medical students at other institutions to figure out how they're facing some of the challenges that we're facing moving forward in medical education. Another strategic goal is to develop and implement OSR initiatives and aid in the development and implementation of WMC initiatives. So I'll speak a little bit more on this later um, when we go over the OSR um, initiatives and goals. Um, these are more strategic goals, so to encourage education techniques and objectives. And so a, a big part of what we do um, is really doing our role or playing a role in advancing um, medical education and innovating. Um, another strategic goal is to assess, uh, to assure that all medical students possess equal freedom and opportunity to pursue the career directions of their choice. 
um, to assure a safe, supportive learning environment free of abuse, unreasonable health risks, bias, and inequities. So kind of an, an, uh, fostering a uh, healthy learning culture and to advance the development of leadership skills, which I spoke about already. So OSR national priorities, these are all going to cycle through. It's quite a long list, but I just wanted to touch on um, a few things and to talk to you about how um, we address these priorities. So I'm going to speak in a few minutes about the Ad Board and how the Ad Board is structured. Um, but basically, these national priorities are what guides the work of the OSR um, and the Ad Board. Um, in particular, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, let's see, these are still cycling through, the Joining Forces Initiative, which you may have seen some emails about uh, in the past six months to one year, depending on how long you've uh, been certified as a rep. But the Joining Forces Initiative is a good example of how we try to impact um, multiple domains of, the, of AAMC's goals overall. So Joining Forces is uh, an initiative designed to help medical students play a role in innovating medical education, specifically with, the, um, with an eye towards um, better addressing the needs of our veteran population. And so it's an opportunity for medical students, um, OSRs, to make a difference, not only in innovating medical education, but improving the health of our um, society. So we'll, we'll be talking more about the Joining Force Initiative at the upcoming annual meeting. We also, um, one of the unique things about the OSR is we bestow the WMC Arnold P. Gold Foundation Humanism and Medicine Award. So this is an award that's supported by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, and um, basically we recognize a medical school faculty physician who exemplifies the qualities of a caring, compassionate mentor in teaching and advising in medical students. This is always one of my favorite events of the entire meeting. And um, this will be taking place on Saturday, November 2nd, while we're all in Philadelphia um, from 12 to 1.30. And I very much encourage you to come. Um, it's a really great opportunity to hear somebody uh, that has usually an amazing career and amazing stories to share. So in terms of representation, you all were either elected or appointed by your medical school um, to monitor the activities at your institution. Um, and to represent opinions to the OSR ad board, which again, I'll be speaking about a little bit um, in a few moments. And so for most of you, this includes one primary and up to three alternative institutional representatives. So that's 141 US uh, member medical schools. We also have associate representatives from Canadian medical schools. So these are non-voting representatives. And then I just wanted to highlight because um, this is something that can be confusing about the structure of the AAMC. The members of the AAMC are actually institutions rather than individuals. So it's your institution that is a member of the AAMC and you serve as a representative for your institution. So it's unlike some of the other medical um, uh, organizations that offer individual memberships. So in terms of what your role as an OSR rep um, should be moving forward, uh, I touched on this a little bit earlier. Mostly be aware of your students' concerns at your school and know your constituents. This can be a real challenge. Some OSRs are involved in student government at their home institution, some are not. Um, but either way, it's, it's up to you to figure out how you're going, how you're going to most accurately represent um, your school when you come to these meetings and when you answer surveys through the listserv um, and all of those other activities. And then, of course, it's, it's your job to share these concerns with the OSR at large and the OSR ad board. Um, you're charged with learning about the OSR and AAMC and the resources available to you and the student population. There's lots of um, things that the OSR produces that you can pass along to students at your school um, that can be helpful. One such example that you may have already been exposed to um, is a guide to applying to residency that the OSR produced a couple years ago. Um, and it really is one of, one of the best resources out there for helping students as they go into the match. Um, you're also charged with promoting the initiatives of the OSR, such as the Humanism and Medicine Award that I just spoke about, Diversity, Careers in Medicine, the Joining Forces Initiative, Student Debt, Health Insurance, et cetera. And of course, disseminate information from the OSR to your school students and administration. One of the important things that you um, need to figure out the best mechanism at your institution for uh, is to disseminate any information 
um, that's either sent by Ali or the Ali Anderson, who's the director um, of the OSR, or the ad board. Um, sometimes these are, you know, really great opportunities, um, and sometimes it's it's research for um, advancing medical education. And then, of course, uh, electing officers to the OSR who will represent all students at WMC. So, um, whatever the mechanism is at, at your school, you'll be expected to play a role in continuing the lineage. So, I want to talk a little bit about OSR meetings, which are a, an important part of um, uh, your function. Uh, attending these meetings is a very important part of your function as a representative. So, the annual meeting is held annually every fall. And typically, the OSR portion runs from Friday through Sunday. So this year, we're going to be in Philadelphia, and then you see um, marched out over the years the different locations we'll be in. There's also regional meetings, and these are held annually every spring in conjunction usually with the Group on Student Affairs. Um, and sometimes we um, uh, work with some other groups as well. And each region meets separately or jointly. It depends on the year. Um, there's kind of an alternating schedule. This year in 2014, it's actually going to be a national regional meeting. Um, so all of the regions will come together in San Diego, April 26th through the 29th. And that will be um, sponsored jointly between the Group on Diversity and Inclusion, the Group on Student Affairs, and the OSR. So in terms of what you can do to make the most out of the meetings, attend session topics of particular interest to your school. Um, but you'll want to keep in mind that if you have more than one representative at the meeting, that you should make sure that you're covering as much of the meeting as possible and then meeting afterwards to um, discuss what, what you each learned in your sessions. Um, it's good for you to attend regional and general meetings for updates on various issues in medical education. And then, of course, if you um, are, are willing and able to share information uh, and input via posters, networking, and discussion at business meetings. So everybody wants to know about new projects at your school. Um, a huge uh, benefit of the WMC meetings is that you can really uh, get a lot of face-to-face -face time learning about innovative programs at other schools and, and speaking with other students about how you can implement um, some new innovations at your own school. And then uh, we elect our national and regional officers at the meetings as well. So after the meeting, some suggestions of what you should do. Return to your school and share what you've learned. Um, discuss rising national issues and get input from your fellow students. It's great for you to communicate with student government and student affairs deans or even the big D head dean. Um, nowadays, many schools are sending teams of people, and you are a very valuable member of the team. And most most cases, um, you know, the deans the deans do really want to hear about what's important to the students, and what are you guys learning at your portion of the meeting. So communicating with students back at your home institution via email, newsletters, or presentations after the meeting is a key um, part of how you can get the message out about what you learned. And then, of course, reporting back to the OSR Ad Board on any issue, ongoing issues at your own institution um, or areas and initiatives of concern. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about OSR leadership. So this is the quote unquote ad board or administrative board that I've referenced a few th times throughout this call. So this is comprised of 12 medical students. The OSR chair is a three year position. So I'm in my chair elect year. I was elected in November um, at the meeting in San Francisco and I'll be getting my chair year in November at this meeting. And then the final year is served as the immediate past chair. There's also four regional chairs which, is, which are a one year position and then national delegates, which is a one-year position. And those national de delegates are elected at large um, and then ultimately select um, one area to focus on um, uh, for an area of interest. So communications, community and diversity, legislative affairs, medical education, and student affairs. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, there's a student member on the AAMC Board of Directors um, that will serve as an ex officio member of the ad board, and that's going to be Maria Kalashnikova. In terms of your regional officers, these are elected at the regional meetings every spring. Um, as I mentioned, there's the regional chairs, which are a one-year position. Um, they are elected in the spring and have a mentorship period and then take office in the fall. Um, at the, actually, at the, 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 it turns, the leadership turns over in November. The regional delegates um, are also elected at the regional meetings. Um, 
and they work directly with national de delegates and regional chairs. And so if you're interested in getting a little bit more involved in the OSR, um, becoming a regional delegate is a really great opportunity to uh, work in one of these areas of interest uh, with the national delegate and also to work within your region with the regional chairs to help them plan um, their regional meetings. Uh, the OSR staff, very important people as you progress through your time in the OSR. As I mentioned before, Allie Anderson is our amazing and wonderful OSR director. I really don't think I know anybody that works as hard as Allie does and cares about the students as much as she does. She's absolutely wonderful. So if you have any questions um, or concerns, you can always email Allie. And Monique Moje uh, and Shannon Boone are um, administrative specialists and administrative associates to um, the OSR, and they are both also wonderful. You probably know Monique from getting certified. They also work with regional and local OSR reps to facilitate specific projects. So again, um, you can always contact your chair um, uh, or a media past chair or chair elect, but Shannon, uh, Monique, and Allie are, are always there for you. In terms of communicating, um, this is like a, a kind of busy slide, but in terms of communicating with your ad board, emails um, to us are great, um, and we communicate amongst ourselves with conference calls and ad board meetings that we have quarterly. And then, of course, we report out to the OSR at our annual and regional meetings. In terms of uh, communicating with your own campus, um, it's good to um, utilize email, although email isn't always the best option if you've gotten to that point in your career where you're deleting every email that gets to your inbox. So, you know, y you can think about um, flyers and info sheets and meeting with deans and giving presentations and reports at student government, some of those things we've already mentioned. And um, the listserv is something that, you know, when you're certified as, as an OSR rep, it's a really great opportunity to kind of get the input of students from, from institutions across the country. Uh, in terms of getting more involved in other opportunities, I spoke a little bit about either running for a regional position or a national position at the annual meeting. There's also uh, liaison positions, and so reps are selected to serve as liaisons to various committees, and it depends on the year um, when the uh, term of service is up for the various liaison positions. Um, but these are, um, you'll, you'll hear more information about these after the annual meeting, and if you're interested in applying, I think the, the applications are typically due um, in early January. But you can read here all of the various liaisons, and they, they have a really excellent time working with all of those other groups that I had mentioned, um, and working with some of the service groups to give input about what students uh, need and would like to see in the future. In terms of resources that you can use as an OSR, as you kind of uh, find your niche, the, OS, the AAMC website is, um, is always a place that where we direct people, and the OSR website you see there um, really is a very rich resource. It can be sometimes challenging to navigate. Uh, when you first look at the website, um, a good thing to notice is that the left and the right side menus change depending on what, uh, what you've navigated to. Um, if you're ever having trouble finding something, you can always email um, some of the leadership or Allie, and they can usually we can usually point you in the right direction. And honestly, um, Googling is awful great. Whenever I want to find something on the OSR website, I Google WMC OSR and then what I'm looking for, and um, it, it mostly comes up pretty well. Um, but here are a few specific pages that you can go to on the website, the resource page, the directory, um, and communications page, which kind of connects you to the national, regional, and legislative affairs listers and updates. Um, this is a list of resources I wish I had known about when I became an OSR rep. Um, so the wheel has already been invented. It's kind of a difficult process to figure out everything that is available to you, just like in medical school. There's so many resources. It's just figuring out um, which ones are the best and how to use them. So the OSR handbook really has everything about the OSR. If you have a question, I would definitely download and reference that first, and you can get that from our website. There's also an effective best practices guideline, um, which your uh, senior reps may or may not have introduced you to. But as you kind of make your, make your own road as an OSR rep, that's a good thing to reference, just in case you're wondering, you know, how should I be doing X at my school? This will give you a nice place to start. Um, the rest of these are links that you can click on 
uh, if you download the presentation, um, and they'll link you right out if you're in presentation mode. Um, just one of the things I wanted to highlight is a lot of people like to use the OSR listserv for questionnaires. It's important that you go to the, the link right here, results of OSR listserv questionnaires, before you design your own questionnaire, because sometimes um, there has already been a questionnaire on, on your topic of interest that was recently done. Um, so instead of replicating work, you can um, go ahead and, and utilize the data that's already out there. Um, like, and as the slide says here, when in doubt, ask Ali. No question, issue or question is too small. I just wanted to point out um, that there is an OSR representatives directory available through the website. So if you want to, for some reason, get in contact with the OSR rep from UPenn or the OSR rep from UCLA, because you hear they have a really cool program there, um, all you have to do is log in to the WMC website, and through your membership as an or through your designation as an OSR, you'll have access to the to the directory. Um, we sent out an email recently about elections. Uh, definitely consider running this year. We are asking that people put in a little bit of thought uh, before coming to the meeting, thinking about whether they'd like to run or not, and getting some feedback from their institution to make sure their institution will support them. So please reference that email that was sent out recently, and I'm sure there will be some reminders coming up. Um, I discussed before the OSR chair elect position and the five national delegates. Those will be the positions that are uh, open for election this year in November. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please feel free to email me. I'd, I'd be happy to talk about it further. So welcome to the OSR. I hope that wasn't too quick of an overview. We felt like we had a, a lot to cover, and we know you're busy, so we want to try to get it done in 30 minutes. Um, but if there's any questions, I would be happy to take questions at this point. So I just brought up this slide for you to type your questions and comments in the chat panel um, and send it to all panelists. All right, well, if we don't have any further questions, as I mentioned before, you can always feel free to email Allie, and um, always feel free to email me or Ronnie, who is our current chair, and um, hopefully we'll see most of you in November. It's really a wonderful time to meet everybody and um, just get really excited about what we can do.